Welcome back, Egyptology lovers. Today we are doing plate 31 of the Book of the Dead, one of the more famous books of the dead. This is uh, described as the negative confessions. So almost considered uh, parallel to that of the Bible with its Ten Commandments. But let me read a little bit about the description of what's going on here. It's fitting to present this chapter as chapter 125 as a single gatefold plate. For this is the very metaphor intended by the Egyptian scribes themselves when they illustrated Ani's Book of the Dead. The vignette shows a shrine. So you can see this is, looks like a shrine up here. And then you can see the doors on each side here, like gates opening up. See the two doors. The vignette shows a shrine whose doors have been thrown open, revealing the deities who judge the deceased sitting inside. So you can see all the deities sitting inside here, on top, on the bottom, up here in the center, and also on the side over here. We should imagine that the small doorways on each side of the shrine were actually big enough to meet all the center the structure was enclosed. Each deity, if they can all truly be called such, appear in the column of text. These beings are arranged in a long horizontal band, so that a brief text appears above and below each figure. The shrine is surmounted by a frieze of alternating cobras and ma'at feathers. So you can see here cobras and ma'at feathers alternating and then reversing again. At the far right of the shrine is a wider column of scenes separated from the judges by a yellow division marker. So you can see the division marker here, and then you can see it right over there. This column has been divided into four small scenes. The top register shows the two Ma'at goddesses right over here. The two Ma'at goddesses, identifiable by the large feathers tucked onto their hair fillets. So you can see over here on top of their heads. They are sitting on thrones, each holding a was scepter and an ankh symbol of life. So you can see the Wa scepter of power and the Un symbol and sitting each on thrones. Beneath them is a scene showing Ani adoring Osiris before a small altar surmounted by a large lotus blossom. So you can see here Osiris, Ani adoring with a blossom which is a symbol for rejuvenation. The third scene contains an abbreviated version of the weighing ceremony showing Ani's heart being weighed against the feather symbolizing Ma'at which was, came from plate 3. So you could see it over here with Anubis, Amit, who eats the heart of the, the deceased who are found to be sinful, and the heart which is basically in the same weight here. Now, interesting that the heart seems to be heavier as opposed to being lighter, uh, or even at the same level scale, so it actually is heavier, so I'm not sure why the artist didn't balance it out. In this version of the scene, only Anubis attends the scale, while Amit eagerly awaits a bad verdict. The bottom register is the column depicts Thoth painting a large Ma'at feather, so you can see him right over here. He's painting it. He's using his uh, ink pots. He's sitting on a plinth. He's uh, basically painting it. Presumably an indication that Ani has passed his trial successfully. Since the weighing scene is such an important part of the Book of the Dead Papyrus, it is improbable that this is a second weighing of the soul. The scene is essentially a reminder of the text of the chapter. So there we go. So those are the scenes right here. Now, chapter 125 is sometimes called the Negative Confessions. Since the deceased denies a long series of sins in this earthly existence, as Faulkner, a well-known philologist, points out, the expression negative confession is self-contradictory, and a more accurate description would be the declaration of innocence. Most often, chapter 125 would be found in conjunction with the weighing of the heart, the scene of judgment. But in this papyrus, the weighing scene illustrates chapter 30b from plate 3 while chapter 125 is located near the end of the papyrus from the standpoint of both logic and our ethical sense, placing the introduction to the gods and the declaration of innocence after the judgment scene stands more to reason. The papyri where the judgment of this chapter appears close together. The question arises whether the text might not have been intended as a magical purge of the deceased earthly sins. On the other hand, one could interpret this chapter as an attempt to reaffirm the innocence, which has already been proven before. This would be just a reasonable, maybe a precaution to take as a guarding against the removal of one's head or heart in the chaotic world, the afterlife, where even the gods must struggle constantly against the irrationality. Nevertheless, the magical character of much of the Book of the Dead indicates that a magical or a ritual purgation is the most likely purpose for chapter 125. The version of the chapter presented in Ani's papyrus consists of an address to the 42 gods of the tribunal. So all 42 here, the confessions, all the 42 gods. Some commentators have tried to connect the number with the gnomes of Egypt, those small city-states into which the country was divided administratively, 
actually the number gnomes vary throughout Egypt's history, yet a number of deities in the Council of Chapter 125 remain constant. A more plausible explanation is that the number 42 was chosen because it is a multiple of 7, a number which had an important role in Egyptian magical thought. There are often two declarations of innocence within chapter 125, only one of which is found in Anis Papyrus. The first group of denials is normally presented in a narrative form and has a larger portion of sins involving civil and economical transgressions. The second series of declarations, which is the one found here, addresses each denial of sin to a specific deity. The second tends to mention a higher proportion of cultic and moral transgressions. Finally, at the top of each text column is the vocal particle E or O, so you see them all in red. O, they're all across. Followed by the God's name, which comes down here. So it's O and then the God's name. Most of these beings occur only in this text and are never known to have temples, cults, or even priests. As with the fearsome guardians of chapter 146 and 147 for plate 11, or Many of the gods and names appearing here allude to the frightening, threatening nature of those who witness Ani's judgment. So there is the explanation to the papyrus. Much of this information I get from the Book of the Dead uh, that I read to you here. It's a lot better explained than if I had to explain it myself. So what you have here basically is how it's presented is I'll show you when I come back and how we read it. So the way we're going to start is going to start retrograde, not reading a canonical uh, direction from right to left, but left to right. It's going to start from top to bottom, and it's going to keep moving leftward because we're moving towards the west so Ani can reach the, the field of reeds. So stay tuned for that. All right, welcome back. So we're going to read each individual negative confession or innocence of declaration. It, st it starts off with the O, and then basically the names the god, and then introduces the, the local city, and then afterwards is the declaration of neg the negative confession, saying, I did not. So for example, I... Right here, I did not do whatever it is that he did. So let's go through them all one by one, um, and let's see what it says. So we'll start off from here. So the first one says, O oh, wide strider who came forth from Heliopolis, which is Yunu in Egyptian. Continuing down here, I have not, which is in red, done wrong. Let's go to the second one. O oh, fire which is right here, fire bracer or embracer, who came forth from Karaha. Now here again, I have not robbed. Continuing. O oh, nosy one who came from Hermopolis. And it continues every year. I did not steal or I have not stolen continuing up here now O swallower of shades who came forth from Kernet and it says here I have not slain people right over here O terrible of face who has come forth from Rasa Jao. Now the word I isn't there, so we're just going to have to assume it. I technically would be here. Did not destroy the food of the people. All right, to the sixth one. O, oh, a double lion who has come forth from the sky. And then again, now we have the word I. I have not destroyed and now over here O, oh, he whose eyes are in the flame and was come forth from Asiut and here it says I have not stolen the God's property and now over here O oh, burning one who has come forth from backwards and over here it says, I have not told lies. Now over here, O oh, breaker of bones who has come forth from Heracleopolis or Nenesut. I have not stolen 
food. Now up here. O orderer of flame who comes forth from Memphis or Hikupta. I did not sullen. All right, the next one over here now. O he of the cavern who came forth from the west. I did not fornicate with a fornicator. The next one. O who his face is from behind him and came forth from his hole. Continuing here. I have not caused anyone to weep or cry. O anointed one who comes forth from the chapel. I have not disassembled. Continuing here. O hot legs. So this is supposed to be separated in two. So hot legs. Who came forth from the twilight. I have not transgressed. And now over here. O he who is in the blood has come forth from the place of the slaughter. I have not done grain profiteering. So this was supposed to be separated here, but grain profiteering. So he didn't make profits off the grain, which are considered holy and sacred to the temples. O oh, eater of entrails, who came forth from the council of 30. So you can see the number 30 here. I have not robbed a parcel of land so he didn't steal from anyone they're part of the land over here now O Lord of truths or truth who came forth from the hall of two truths we did this before in the last uh, plate and now it's over here I have not discussed secrets so he didn't whisper or didn't rumor Continuing now, O strayer who came forth from Bubastes or Bastet, the, uh, the gnome area of the cat. I have not brought a lawsuit. So he didn't sue anybody or make a complaint. Continuing over here now, O planter who came forth from Iunu or Heliopolis. I have not disputed at all about property. Continuing here. Oh, he who is doubly evil one, so twice as bad, who came forth from Basurite Nome. Now down here. I have not had intercourse with a married woman. So again, this is you can see this is part of the biblical of uh, adultery, so no adultery was permitted. So that's something you can see that comes or stretches out into the Bible and Judeo-Christian uh, beliefs. Now to the next one. O oh, the Webeti serpent who has gone forth from the place of execution. And here it says, I have not copulated with a married woman. So it repeats twice. So Adultery was considered very bad in ancient Egyptian times for them to have repeated it twice here in a row. So that's something to be uh, to take note of. And very important, you can see why it passed on to the Judeo-Christian biblical laws. All right, let's continue over now here. O oh, he who brings what he sees and who has gone forth to the house of Min. Now this you can see is the symbol S, but it's actually the Min symbol on top of the standard. So it's a gnome. Now it continues in here. I have not wrongly copulated. So again, something to do with sex. Three in a row, adultery and then copulation. So he didn't have sex, I guess, out of wedlock or something like that. All right, to the next one. O, oh, he who is over the great ones, who came forth from 
Yeah, this is interesting here, this gnome. I don't really know what this gnome is. It's not really even part of the 42 gnomes list. So that's something kind of to leave uh, to a mystery, I guess. But it looks like a plant. So either an acacia tree, an area, a gnome where the acacia resides. Uh, not too sure. So let's continue. I have not done striking terror in anyone. All right, over here now. O demolisher who came forth from who came forth from now this is also a little interesting but it could be the Taur uh, one of the gnomes of uh, of Egypt uh, since it has that same semblance but it says beloved Taur so it could be one of those but again very not very familiar with it particularly but it should be something that's somewhere in the records so we'll continue here I have not transgressed. All right, to the next one. O proclaimer of speech, who has gone forth from Werit. Now over here. I have not been hot-tempered. So he hasn't been angry. Over here now. O youth, who has come from the double scepter, which is a gnome. I have not been neglectful of truthful words so he's always remembered to say the truth that he hasn't forgotten and he doesn't lie continuing here oh dark one who comes forth from darkness I have not cursed so this is interesting a dark one who comes from darkness doesn't really tell you who it is but it's an interesting type of God now over here, O, oh. O oh, he who brings offerings, who comes forth from Asiut. Now the word I is not, the word I is not here, so we're going to have to say I did not, or I have not been violent. Over here now, O oh, proclaimer of voice, who comes forth from Wenu. Or Venice. Now over here, I have not confounded truth or made up truth. O possessor or Lord of Faces. So this is two two words here, Lord of Faces, who comes forth from Nejefet. So Nejefet. I have not been impatient. Next one. O captain, so O captain who came forth from Wetten. I have not discussed. So it could be anything. He didn't maybe rumor. All right. O lord again, possessor of the two horns, who comes forth from Asiut. So another place, Asiut again, repeated. I have not been garrulous about manners. So he's paid attention to his manners and his behavior amongst his officials or people of higher rank or just even other people. All right, we have 10 more to go. So here we go. Oh, Nephertim. So Nephertim is the god that comes out of the uh, lotus flower, which is a god of type of rebirth. Who came forth from Memphis. So Hikupta, which is Egyptian. I have not done wrong, and I have not done evil. So twice he's basically proclaimed he hasn't done anything wrong. The next one. Oh, he who does not allow survivors, who comes forth from Basaurus or Jadu. And over here it says, I have not done dispute with the king. So he has not argued with his pharaoh or his king. Now over here, O, oh, he who acts as he wishes, who comes forth from, now this is interesting, and this word is Antiniopolis, and it's a town in Middle Egypt. And now it continues, I have not waded in water. Now over here, O Ihi, which is a god, who came forth from the primordial water of Nun. This is Nun. 
and over here it says my voice has not been loud so in the waters of Non it was very quiet so screaming was probably not allowed even in the temples themselves which were considered sacred waters of noon as well now over here oh he who prospers the common people so the the god who gives blessing to the common people who comes forth from asiut again so the third time asiut has been mentioned and this is important i have not cursed a god so this is again from the biblical from uh, the bible is taken from this as well as you can see the, see you in the judeo christian basically you shall not use the god's name in vain so this is pretty much the same thing you have not cursed the god continuing over here now o uniter of attributes who comes forth from the caverns now over here is i have not made extolling over here now o the uniter of good who comes forth from the caverns. Now the word I is in here, so it's I have not harmed the bread rations of the gods. So f when there were food put aside for the society, there was also food put aside for the temples and the gods, so he didn't do anything bad to them. And over here now, O upraised of head. Now this is a serpent, so you can see by the determinative who came forth from the shrine I have not stolen of the Kenef cakes from the blessed so from the blessed so there was some offering given to the uh, blessed uh, spirits and he didn't steal from there all right now to the last two O he which is with the snake so a serpent he who brings the portion who comes forth from the Hall of the Two Truths. So this is the second time, the Hall of the Two Truths in this uh, confession. And over here you have two uh, sins that are being confessed. But the word I is in here, so we assume it. I have not stolen Henu cakes or Hefnu cakes from the youths, from the children. And I have not fettered the God of my town. And now the final confession over here. O oh, he who brightens the lands, who came forth from the Fayum, we assume it's the Fayum, and continues finally here, I have not slain sacred nichir cattle. So uh, sacred cattle being the Apis bull. So when there was an animal that was sacred to the temple, they didn't slaughter it. So there you go. This, these are the 42 confessions or declaration of innocence by Ani. Uh, interesting, have you seen uh, before, there are three that were related to uh, sexual misconduct. And then you had uh, one for murder as well, a couple for murder as well. So there you go. If you want to go through it, I suggest you do some interesting ideas here. Again, not all the gods mentioned in here where you see on the very above are actually have cults or temples for, of their own. They're just simply named by Ani for his purpose only, or it might be something that the priests of that temple had in particular for people. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please stay tuned uh, for the other plate, plate 32. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and take care.